Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this month's edition of Ocean Plastic webinar. As many of you may know, maybe you missed it, yesterday was International Women's Day, so we thought that to commemorate it would bring you work being conducted by two amazing women, Huyen and Emily, who have been working on the Compost Project, which is an international and interdisciplinary ocean plastic scientific endeavor. Today, they will be focusing on the objectives of the project and just telling you their experiences and learnings from conducting such type of research and especially working in a developing country context and the different challenges that one may face. Just some quick housekeeping before we get started. If you'd like to ask questions, please do so via Slido, sli.do. The code is OPW. The way the format of this presentation will work, Emily will present first, after which Huyen will come in with her contribution and we'll hand back to Emily. We hope you enjoy this webinar and I will now hand over to Emily. Thank you. So I will share my screen with you. Can you see it well? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Takunda, very much for the introduction. And very thank you for inviting us to present uh, this project. So it's a compost project. Sorry. Yeah. Um, this project has just ended last week, actually. Um, the objective was to create an observatory for measuring plastic occurrences in society and environment in Vietnam. So I have been working very closely with uh, Dr. Nguyen Tai Huyen. So she will be uh, presenting to you the, her contribution. She's from the uh, Hanoi Architectural University. So based in Hanoi in the Northern part of Vietnam. And me, I'm a um, doctor from uh, IRD, which is a French Research National Institute for Sustainable Development. I'm uh, based at the Mediterranean Institute of Oceanography in France. But since uh, six years, I've been affected so in Vietnam. So I'm working daily at the Ho Chi Minh University of Technology in Ho Chi Minh City, so in the southern part of the country. So this is where I'm developing some research regarding uh, microplastic activities with, with the team there. So today I would like to, as you said, to present you the compost project. And more than the results, I would like to, to show you the challenges and the the scientific issue that we are facing in this context and how we manage to handle them. So first, the Compost Project is a capacity building project which is supported by the French government. So the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs and it has been implemented by five partners. So the French Embassy in Vietnam, my institute, IRD, and also three other partners, IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, PRX, which is a decentralized cooperation between Paris Megacity and Hanoi Megacity, and ICES, which is the International Center for Interdisciplinary Science and Education based in the central Vietnam. So these three partners, the last three ones were mainly um, working on the raising awareness contribution of this project. So I would like first to um, remind you the context in 2018 where we thought about this project. At that time in 2018, plastic pollution was becoming a serious concern in Vietnam. The publication of Jenna Jambek in 2015 make a lot of noise. Uh, the Vietnam was ranked fourth among all the countries for plastic uh, emission to the ocean. And also there was um, the role of the waste mismanagement that was conducted to this bad ranking. So actually it's been, has been done a lot of noise. Like at the beginning, it was kind of denied, but very soon uh, later on the people began to to think of, okay, what can we do now? What kind of action can, can we do to uh, change this ranking? And uh, at the government level, the prime minister draft at this time a national action plan. And it was very, very uh, 
ministry, different ministry involved on the waste management, involved on pollution, that put together and try to uh, think about what could we do in terms of an action plan to reduce those uh, marine litter emission. And this drafting just ending in uh, December 2019 to a decision to reduce 75% of marine litter by 2030. So in 2018, we were just at the period of consultation of people who were speaking together between academia, between NGOs, between the managers, authorities, and companies on how, what can we do to uh, reduce this plastic emission in Vietnam? What we realized when doing this uh, draft was that there was a big lack of knowledge, first on the plastic waste management and the role of the informal sector. So solid waste management is, in Vietnam is highly complex. Uh, there is a contribution of the informal sector, so the one which is taking care of the recyclable waste. So Huyen has been um, coordinating a research team on that for four years, which is called Recycled and funded by um, IRD. And she was specialized on uh, this uh, informal sector in Hanoi city. But at that time, that was really a very few research and very few knowledge on this uh, solid waste management system. Also, there was a lack of data regarding plastic contamination in waterways. Everyone was agrees that plastic pollution was something very real when you see all the waterways in Vietnam when you were going to the beach or see the rivers. For sure, there was a pollution, but we didn't know of the quantity of plastic that were floating and also their quality. So very kind of empiric uh, point of view, but nothing mm -hmm. regarding uh, data. Our team realized the first um, study regarding microplastic and also a plastic debris emission into a river. So the river crossing Ho Chi Minh City, the Saigon River. And we measured very high elevated concentration of both microplastic and macroplastic on this river. So those two publications uh, raised the concerns among Vietnamese researchers. A different um, team went to us and asked us what was our methodology, what, how we were doing, if we can also look at their samples and do the measurement for them. So at that time, we realized that there was a lack of data, but also a lack of methodology and a, and so a lack of research that we're doing in this country. So. Um, to contribute to this uh, draft and to continue to contribute sorry to this um, uh, reduction of uh, emission of plastic towards the marine litter, we decided to build up a project, so a capacity building project that we could scale up the research capacity existing in Vietnam. So the idea was to um, scale up what Huyen was doing in Hanoi to scale up it at different cities, different university of Vietnam and also to scale up what I have been doing regarding microplastic in Ho Chi Minh City to also different universities across the country. And our main idea from the beginning was to develop and to adopt a common methodology for each uh, science, so social science and environmental science. And the idea was first really to have this common methodology to be able to compare and to see what are the differences across the country. So the objective of this um, observatory was to produce data, to build reliable scientific knowledge, but also to raise awareness and contribute to public policies. So we had for that four um, uh, partners, so the French Embassy, IUCN, PRX, and ICES, who took part uh, to this objective of uh, contributing to a public policy and raising awareness. For uh, Huyen and I, we focus on uh, conducting a network of research teams. So six were um, focusing on studying the organization of the informal plastic waste management in medium to large cities. So you have uh, their localization in blue dot in Vietnam and seven on measuring the microplastic contamination in freshwater and marine waters. So what I will do now is I will present what uh, I have been doing regarding this uh, microplastic assessment and after Huyen will present you what she has done regarding the informal waste. So we assess microplastic in riverine, lacustrine and marine aquatic environment in Vietnam. 
So the idea was to conduct a research network. So we have been working with uh, 30 Vietnamese researchers belonging to eight institutions across the country. So from the north um, in Hanoi with the USTH and the Vietnam Academy of Science and Technology to institute ENPC and IET. One in uh, Haiphong, also in the north, but on the seaside, Imer Institute. Then in the central Vietnam, we work with the Danang University and uh, the Huynian University. And in the south, we uh, have been working with uh, my university, Ho Chi Minh University of Technology, and Bun Tao Baya University, which is also on the seaside. So our first um, idea, what I'm saying, was to define a common methodology. And common is quite important for us, as I said, because we really wanted to compare the concentration between the different environments. So we, um, we decided to base this methodology on already developed methodologies. So we look at the different reports, the one of the GSAM, also the one of uh, US, of Australia, of Europe, regarding the different methodology and recommendation for microplastic. We also based on the existing uh, scientific literatures. But clearly there was many challenges and we really need to be to adapt our methodology to different um, challenge. The first one was the technical resources. So when you read, when you read the GISAMP report or the other publication, most of the time the sample are taken using a Monta troll net. In Vietnam, um, we don't have oceanographic vessel. We just have a uh, have, as you can see on the picture, some wooden boat, like for fishing, very small ones. And clearly we cannot put a montage troll net, we cannot have a troll. So this is the main um, technical resource that we are facing. So, so first regarding the sampling. Also, when we want to do the analysis in the lab, we don't have um, lab equipped with uh, uh, like uh, up-to-date, um, like I say, uh, air contamination to prevent air contamination, or we don't have all the last equipment for FTIR, micro FTIR, or micro ramen. So it means that we need to find some methodology where the equipment can be found in Vietnam and where we are sure to minimize all the contamination. Also, a challenge regarding the human resources. So, um, when we began the project, there were only the team in Ho Chi Minh City that worked on these topics. So it means that we couldn't rely on people to train us, to train the, the other teams. And also we needed to have some methodology that were easy to, to applicate. We couldn't have some specific skills like using micro ramen or micro FTIR. First, we don't have in Vietnam, but also it needs specific skills that the technician don't have here. So we needed to build something that was easily used in Vietnam. And then we have a challenge regarding the financial resources. Um, it's not, uh, I would say, expensive to work on microplastic if you uh, are working on other pollution. I um, used to work before on trace metal, so it's something much more expensive. But um, in Vietnam, most of the products, most of the regions, we have to import them. And the price for importation can be really high. And it's ending up that the cost for having one sample is getting insane. So some of the regions, we couldn't have them. We had to wait like six months to have them and then the price was incredible. So we decided also to choose the methodology according to the cost and according to the availability regarding importation. Despite those sad challenges, we end up to, to get a methodology, which is, I would say, working easily, that was easy for everyone to, uh, to adapt and to use. And of course, we use the quality assurance and all the papers providing recommendation on how to assure uh, low contamination, how to assure reproducibility, how to assure some um, uh, efficiency of um, retubing of microplastic when you do the extraction and when you do the observation. So then when we define this common methodology, the compost projects allow us to um, buy common equipment. So all the teams that were working with us were using the same equipment for sampling. So you see here a sampling net of 50 centimeter diameter and a flow meter. 
We all had uh, glassware that were um, furnished for doing all the analysis in the lab. And we are all observing our microplastic by a Leica a stereo microscope. We don't have in Vietnam a micro FTIR or micro Raman. We just find a FTIR ATR, just one. And so we are um, working with the um, analytical lab to uh, collaborate with them and to send them all our uh, samples. So to be sure that anyone were working the same way and to have a comparable methodology, we organized different training. So some specific one regarding the sampling, analyzing and observation of microplastic. So applied to a riverine system, lake and marine water, but also applied to sediment. And as a second obje objective of the project is to produce data and to uh, publish scientific knowledge, we also organize soft skills training, like to how to interpret the concentration, how to criticize the data that we are archiving, and also how to write a scientific publication for targeting ISI journals and not only targeting Vietnamese journals. Finally, after um, six months of implementing the project, in October 2019, we were able to begin the monitoring. So uh, we organized the monitoring of 22 environments across Vietnam on a three month basis. So in this 22 environment, we were measuring the concentration and the morphology of microplastics. So in seven rivers, you have them in blue, in seven urban lakes and reservoirs, in red, in six bays, in green and in two beaches in orange. Then I will present you the second objective of uh, the project, which was to produce freely accessible data and scientific knowledge. So having freely accessible data is something quite common when you are from uh, Europe, US, or other place in the world. But in Vietnam, having freely accessible data is really something very rare. Most of the time, if you want data, you have to buy them, and you never know how they were taken. Uh, what are the parameters, how were the condition of sampling and the condition in the lab and so on. So it was very, I would say, new for this project to produce data and make them freely accessible using the Dataverse. So we use the Dataverse of my uh, institution, so dataverse.ird.fr, which is under the FAIR principles, so findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable uh, principles. And if you go to the partnership uh, Vietnam Data Verse, you will find microplastic in aquatic environments, and there you will be able to find the seven data sets with all the concentration and morphologies of the plastic that we have been measuring every three months, sorry, since October 2019. So you have them for each environment, and I put here an example regarding uh, the concentration in Bay environment of Quan Yin and Haiphong province. So they are um, registered with a DOI, which allows the author to have a, an authorship on their data. We have also uh, published uh, a paper gathering all the partners. So all of the uh, institution partners and also the analytical centers were involved in this baseline paper. So it's called Baseline Assessment of Microplastic Concentration in Marine and Freshwater Environments. And the idea was really to, to show the methodology that we use and to, to publish the first data and how is the situation right now. So this paper is in public uh, open access, sorry. And as I said, you can find here the protocols, uh, well-described protocols for surface water analysis and also for um, sediment analysis. And our goal with this publication is to make available for anyone who wants to work in Vietnam on those topics to uh, use this methodology that is working, uh, that is easy to implement and where the regions are very easy to find and to buy. I will just show you some of the results, the main results. I will not go deep into the results because I think it's not what is uh, interesting today and uh, this is not what we want to show you. You can uh, have a look to the publication for that. But interestingly, uh, the concentration of microplastics, so from 300 to 5,000 micrometer size, uh, were 
highly variable um, over all the uh, studied environments. So in rivers and lakes and bay, we work we measure concentration below one to more than one thousand uh, items per cubic meters. So it's quite interesting to see that we have a high spatial variation and showing to also to uh, to managers that having only one rivers or one lake monitored in Vietnam doesn't show you the real pictures. And what was also interesting to uh, to observe is that the most concentrated environments are the one in very dense uh, zone, very dense urban area, and also small ones. So very small urban lake and very small rivers like canals crossing the city and also which are submit, submitted to a uh, wastewater discharge. So uh, wastewater um, sometimes treated, sometimes not. So most of the wastewater are not treated in Vietnam, but even if they are treated, the treatment is not adapted to remove microplastics. So it was not designed for that um, as in other countries in the world. So this is why we think uh, we have more concentration in these small uh, urban canals and small urban lakes. So right now, all the group of researchers are working on the temporal variation. They will have a one year and a half uh, monitoring to see if we have some temporal variation and to identify the factors that are influencing those concentrations. So I will finish on that, and I would like um, I would like to invite you to listen to Huyen. She will uh, present what her contribution on the informal plastic waste. So I will. Stop my video, no, deactivate the sound. Thank you, Emily. So you can you hear me well? It's okay. So yes, as a, yeah, thank you. As a partner of uh, to implement the social science component of the project. Our main task is to research and learn about the plastic collection and recycling activity in Vietnam. First of all, I will present about the waste management in Vietnam in order to clarify the characteristic of the waste management context and situation, especially for plastic in Vietnam. So please, Nick, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So within the framework of uh, the compost project, our team is in charge of uh, research and survey in six cities in Vietnam, located along the, the length of the country, in which uh, there, is, there are two largest cities in Vietnam. So there, there are Hanoi and uh, Ho Chi Minh City. So you can see in Vietnam, there is a multi-level and multi-sectorial challenge calling for institutional and individual responsibility. So in Vietnam, the formal sector actually collect domestic solid waste uh, in general, but uh, informal sector collect recyclable waste. Yeah. Next slide, please. So you can see here the structure of a formal collection system that uh, we can uh, draw it uh, from the household uh, in general, uh, people bring to drop the domestic waste and collection pipe at collection pipe, and then uh, this waste will be collected by formal collector and then transported to landfill. Uh, and about the structure of formal, but uh, however, informal uh, collect collection system, you can see the chain uh, similar. So from the household, a recyclable waste uh, are collected by itinerant collector, uh, calling in Vietnamese uh, Dong Nat. Uh, they come uh, to the household and searching and buy uh, recyclable waste from the household, and then they uh, resell uh, to the to the to the aggregator. Uh, so they sell the recyclable waste to aggregator, spread all over the city. The so the and finished by the uh, craft village uh, to recycle all these uh, recyclable waste. So you can see the chain of the all these uh, recyclable waste. So including uh, plastic. Yeah. So 
the plastic ch waste value chain is very complex and involves numerous uh, stakeholders, including formal and informal sector. So you can see in the di diagram from the waste source, uh, the formal and the informal collector come and uh, collect different kinds of uh, waste, uh, including uh, here we, we separate between recyclable waste uh, in, uh, in the green uh, flesh and uh, the uh, waste, domestic waste in the uh, orange uh, line. So you can see here, uh, and we can see the, the value chain uh, we compose of uh, four steps from the waste source, uh, the collector, and then the aggregator, and then transporter to the waste treatment and recycling sector. You can see here uh, the diagram of all the stakeholders of the, the system, which is different for, with another country, especially uh, developed uh, country. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yeah. So for each, uh, each aggregator in the system, uh, we use the same survey uh, questionnaire. Uh, so we uh, we, make, we do a su survey uh, to the aggregator owner, and then uh, we draw about the aggregator to understand uh, how the aggregator was distributed in the city. So you can see here, for example, as a scale of uh, an uh, aggregator, we have a, a kind of uh, uh, technical uh, survey questionnaire and we draw it to understand the space. And then uh, in the city, we try to map uh, all these aggregators. For example, in Hanoi, we have actually uh, more than uh, 800, uh, 877 aggregators in the city. Uh, next slide, please. And the same methodology we use and we train with uh, other partners come from uh, uh, Ving City and uh, Danang University and Nyachang University and Tainuyen University uh, to do the same methodology and to uh, participate with us in the surveys in other cities so that uh, after uh, uh, the project, we can now have a spatial distribution of aggregator in six cities regarding to the period of establishment. So you can see here all the present of uh, this aggregator in each city uh, with uh, the number and then uh, the distribution in the city. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, another, another result of our study in a project, uh, in a compost project, it is we can identify all kinds of uh, plastic waste uh, were collected by this uh, system, this informal system. So here is some kind of uh, plastic that we uh, category, we make the category by the informal sector. And uh, you can see here all kind of uh, plastic weight from the household, from the uh, hard plastic, and then uh, old kind of bag, even polyesterine. Uh, were collected and recycled by this uh, system. Thank you. Next slide, please. So some key finding of our, uh, of our team, it is, first of all, we, uh, we should understand that uh, the informal sector in Vietnam, uh, the informal sector uh, in collect and recycling, it is not uh, illegal. Uh, and then the recyclable waste informal sector uh, in Vietnam is very dynamic. Flexi flexible and uh, it's very efficient. And uh, they, uh, they are at all scale and diverse scale and uh, we can recognize a, a kind of circular economy. Uh, the role of this uh, and capacity of this informal sector uh, in waste collection and recycling vary among cities. Is the different between uh, the scale of the city, the, between uh, different uh, number of population, for example. And uh, the, our survey methodology was deployed to, to build up a data set on recyclable waste collection by informal sector in different cities in Vietnam. And it was also public in the database as uh, 
Emily mentioned. So uh, as up to now, the result of, the, uh, of our study were used uh, and uh, developed by another project. For example, EU Rethinking Plastic uh, pilot project at Ho Chi Minh City, and uh, especially uh, the uh, uh, construction of the building of EPR policy led by the Ministry of uh, Environment and um, uh, Natural Resource of Vietnam. Uh, so uh, that's uh, our, our, our and, and we let uh, Emily to continue to present. Thanks. Thank you again. I'm trying to move to the next slide. Yes. So now I will uh, focus on the third objective of the compost project, which was to raise awareness and contribute to public policies. So um, as I mentioned in the introduction, we were in the context where we had a lack of knowledge, lack of data. And our aim was also to uh, diffuse all this knowledge achieved during the compost project and to uh, publish it to the different uh, uh, to the different publics. So we have been working with different organizations for that. So I will just present you briefly what we have done. So we have used the traveling scientific exhibition. This is an exhibition that um, we, I did with uh, Michaela, Michaela Lemer, which is a, who is anthropologist, and my colleague uh, Kule Tui uh, in 2018. It's called Plastic Methods, Wild Life, and it's showing the different plastic life uh, in Vietnam. And the idea was to uh, present it via the compost project to make it travel at different schools, uh, international, Vietnamese one, you know, also in supermarket, place where people are using a lot of plastics to try to raise their awareness, but also in companies. And it was also borrowed for environmental events and uh, team building uh, um, events. Um, I show you also here some pictures of Huyen and I who, who, who did a lot of um, uh, uh, awareness at high school and at the public event also. Um, we also contracted uh, within the compost projects with a local NGO called Change Vietnam. And this NGO is very, I would say, creative. So they, uh, they created the Homo Plastic Campaign, which is a three months campaign to promote science and to raise awareness regarding plastics. So the idea was to uh, be in the, the, the people who were getting scientists and were knowing how we make the science regarding plastic pollution, how we are achieving the data and what are those data, and what do they mean and what we can do. So I will show you here an exhibition that they have done. They have done it in a very famous uh, mall. So with uh, more than 15,000 people coming per day. So they exhibit uh, this plastic hub and uh, the people could come and uh, play games and wear uh, a Kenny suit and were having some experiment to do some uh, key facts about uh, plastic pollution and also about the latest uh, publication uh, of the scientific literature. They also created two uh, videos on YouTube. So if you allow me to show you one, I think it's uh, very interesting to see how uh, an NGO can, uh, can adapt, I will say, um, a way of working and how they can promote our, our scientific uh, um, work. So, excuse me. Yes. So, the animation is in Vietnamese, but you don't worry, you will be able to understand. So this is the study taking place in the Saigon River, the one we are studying with my team in Ho Minh City. Trở thành loài nhân nhựa
và các núi rác khổng lồ như đảo rác trôi nổi khắp các đại dương nước uống bữa ăn trở thành bụi ám ảnh mỗi ngày mỗi ngày Um, I hope that you. Oops, sorry, sorry. I forgot to remove the sound. So I really hope that you enjoyed the um, the trailer, and you see how imaginative they are. And this uh, campaign was really, really famous and attracted a lot of uh, visitors, especially on their website and on uh, on this uh, video. We also have conducted some social media um, raising awareness. We use social media as a raising awareness tool. So Facebook is really, really famous in Vietnam. Everything is uh, taking place on Facebook. So we had a Compost Project Facebook page, and I use here and I've made two uh, videos, special, especially for Facebook um, templates, I would say. One about the uh, plastic floating in the Saigon rivers and one regarding the informal waste sectors. So they are also um, using the scientific literature available on those uh, two systems and they are trying to make them uh, understandable for the large public and try to commit them to change their behavior and how they can uh, do something to uh, limit these plastic emissions. We have also uh, contributed to public policies uh, during the project. So uh, with the IUCN, we have been working with uh, ISPONRE, which is the Institute of Strategy and Policy on Natural Resources and Environment. And they have a, a built-in that they are publishing to the uh, Department of Natural Resources and Environment of each province. So it's really a built-in dedicated to managers. So Huyen already published uh, papers on this bulletin, so showing her results regarding the role of the informal sector, how they are organized, what kind of uh, waste they are looking for, and what can we do to uh, keep them, I would say, and to integrate them in the, in, the, in the waste management system. We are also preparing one bulletin regarding microplastic, where several uh, articles also from my team in Ho Chi Minh City will be published uh, in this bulletin. So PRX also um, is producing a, a handbook um, dedicated to the reduction on how to reduce plastic uh, in Vietnam on a daily basis. So this uh, handbook is dedicated to managers, is dedicated to uh, companies, authorities, and the idea is to provide some uh, knowledge, so very key fact knowledge on what is the situation today, but also what can we do to reduce the, the use of the plastic uh, today to reach uh, the National Action Plan, actually. So I will finish with the main conclusion and perspective of this project. Uh, as you can see, it has been very intense and we have covered a lot of aspects from the research part to the raising awareness. And um, the, what I would like to share with you as a conclusion is that this project allows us to build two research communities. So it's quite important because now we can capitalize on the methodologies which were developed both on microplastic and on also on a social survey. And very important, we can address local and global scientific issues. In terms of interdisciplinarity, I think that the community in Vietnam, I say NGOs, organization, academia, is now ready to link on the plastic waste versus marine litter. At the beginning of the project, we were not mature but now we, we can work on that and we can have a sustainability scientific approach of this issue. Regarding the monitoring that we set up, especially the one regarding by uh, microplastic, so we are right now discussing with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment for the takeover of this monitoring by the ministry. We don't want it to be uh, French anymore. We don't have the funding and we want really to, to give it back to the Vietnamese uh, authorities. So we are uh, working with two uh, institutions uh, under the monitoring. 
And our, our idea of this monitoring is to have a long-term approach, a long-term measurement to be able to measure the effectiveness of the plastic emission reduction policies that are taking place and the targets that we have to, uh, to reach for 2030, so less than 25% of emission towards the sea. So thank you for your attention. So of course, thank you to all the partners, academia partners involved in the project the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs for the funds, and our collaborator of the project, French Embassy, Vietnam, IRD, IUCN, PRX, and ICES. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emily and Huyen. Uh, as someone who lives in a developing country and was born and raised here, I really appreciate that you took the time to understand the context of where you were conducting your work and try to adapt you know the different practices to what's on the ground so to kick us off i would like to ask the first question do you think institutions working on setting best you did to at the start of your presentation oh, sorry Takunda, i was cut and i couldn't hear you <laughs> could you repeat <laughs> No problem. Um, the question is surrounding from Anonymous. Do you think that institutions working on setting the best practices should take into consideration the availability of equipment depending on the region of the world? Yeah, uh, definitely, I think so. I mean, um, me, when I read all the reports, I mean, of uh, GESAMP and all the other, because I, I really feel that GESAMP is a really, really good report and it's very uh, inspiring for us. But when I read that and when, when I tried, when I was in Vietnam to apply it, it's been very, very difficult. So I really think that we, sh we should uh, consider the availability of the different country because uh, we cannot adapt uh, what is done uh, in Europe, what is done in US or what is done in Australia. For sure, we have some differences. And I think if we don't show the differences, if we don't talk about it, we will assume that we don't have differences. And then it will lead to a misunderstood, uh, misunderstanding story about the concentration and the results and so on. So I think it's really important to, to talk about that and not to be ashamed and that we don't have those facility, but we can still uh, uh, do it uh, in a good way. Thank you for that. I completely agree with you. We really need to take into consideration the different regions and they capacities for this type of work. Leading off of that, Delphine says, thanks, Emily. Are there any other Southeast Asian developing countries that have done a similar project to yours? And can you compare the results? Um, regarding microplastics, no. Uh, as far as I know, we are the only one having this global approach. But um, there is at the ASEAN level initiatives like COPC initiatives, for example, which are gathering uh, different countries, but they didn't end up with a methodology yet. It was the objectives, so they have done uh, some workshop, but to my knowledge, they are still working on setting up uh, a common methodology. So it's, uh, objective is not reached now. I think for Vietnam, we, we set up this project at the right time. Uh, we set, up, we set it up when the research community is willing to begin to work on that. And if we, the project was one year later, it, it won't work because all the um, university will be developed their own methodology, their own way, and it won't change for sure. So we were very lucky that we arrived at a good time to set up something uh, national, I would say. So it definitely does come down to timing in some cases where you have to have the stars must align when you have the perfect conditions for this project to work in a nutshell. This question speaks more about your methodology for your research. And they say, thank you for, the, for your process that is working in Vietnam to collect and analyze microplastic. And the question is, where did you send your samples for analyzing? Or no did way. you do we it in ourselves. Vietnam? Yeah, everything is made in Vietnam. So I think this is uh, the strength of this project is now all the Vietnamese researchers are relying on their own lab. So we don't have to send the samples away. We can do everything uh, in Vietnam. 
except what I was um, discussing, that we don't have a, a micro FTIR or micro ramen to characterize the polymer type. We can only do it with um, equipment which is not precise. So this is why we are mothering microplastics from 300 micrometers size. We cannot assure that below 300 micrometer, it's not uh, the polymer is something else. So we yeah we consider the our abilities and we provide the results in, in accordance. But it's very important that everything was is made in Vietnam and especially in this COVID-19 situation because uh, Vietnam's boundary has been closed since more than a year. So we are not able to travel anymore. You can go out of Vietnam, but you can come in. So we really needed a methodology that rely 100% in Vietnam. It's definitely been a bit more difficult to conduct research under the COVID-19 restrictions. Following up on your research and data collection, it was noted that you only did monitoring on two beaches. Was this on the sand of the beach or in the water, so the tidal zone? And did you have plans to collect offshore marine water samples? So, um, so we connected only two beaches, uh, mainly because uh, that was the interest of the researcher. So we led the researcher to choose the key environment in their own uh, uh, province, uh, because they were the one knowing most uh, what kind of environment is very crucial to study. Uh, so we did it on Sandy Beach, uh, not in, we did it on a perpendicular transect from intertidal to not uh, to the front beach. Um, we have also a group from Danang, from the campus, they already published uh, another um, papers on the microplastic concentration in beaches from Danang. So also the same kind of um, methodology and also in the intertidal inter zone of the, the beaches. Regarding taking sample of uh, sediments uh, directly from the sea, um, the thing is we don't have the vessel to do it. We don't have the equipment, so we, we cannot. And there are some uh, institution, Vietnamese institution that deal with uh, geology and uh, sediments but uh, we don't have access to the, to, to the equipment and vessel. So we, this is something that we cannot do, unfortunately. Thank you, no, it's very understandable. I'd just like to change directions now. Um, don't worry, we haven't forgotten about you. I was just trying to segment the questions. So this was one of my questions because you went into work in Vietnam. So what were your experiences working with the local government? And I'm directing this to both of you. Were they supportive of the project? Was there any resistance? How did that go? Either of you can start. Okay. Uh, so, um, because uh, this is um, uh, in the framework of a research project, and uh, I think uh, we have. Um, uh, we have a lot of support, first of all, uh, by our university and then by the city that uh, we do the research uh, because as uh, we develop it and uh, we try to uh, present the, the meaning of the project and, to under, and, it is, uh, and the, the objective is very clearly uh, so that uh, we have a lot of support. Uh, by the city, by university, and by institutional. Uh, sometimes uh, um, for um, uh, the collect formal collector, sometimes we have some more difficult uh, and uh, only for the um, aggregator informal sector, sometimes uh, they, uh, they have some difficult to share uh, the information, especially about the um, uh, Revenue, <laughs> the um, uh, uh, about the, yeah. the salary and then the quantity of the uh, waste uh, recyclable waste uh, collect, but uh, for the um, uh, formal institutional and uh, the city with authority, uh, when we uh, follow the the official uh, way, it is uh, always easy. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, and it's been um, 
easy to, to work on that subject almost. Also because um, I mean, the government uh, has a lot of, uh, um, they draft the, well, they have decided the national action plan and they have a lot of uh, ongoing action from the government side, from authorities. They really want to, to change uh, this ranking and to, uh, to, I mean, well, to reduce this plastic emission. So it is something that we can uh, discuss quite easily and we never have a resistance from, uh, from the government, from authorities from this side. That's very good to hear that, you know, you had an enabling environment that you were working in. Going a bit more into the informal sector work, Audrey says, thank you for the great work you've done. How do you control the pollution created by the recycling process and the health of the workers? That would be to hear. Yeah. Uh, 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 in fact, when we uh, study the, the informal sector, uh, we recognize that there is a difference between the collect, uh, collector system and uh, recycling system. These uh, two activities is different. So we always mix uh, the pollution problem of uh, this uh, system uh, that uh, the same in the in the same uh, problem. Uh, so we uh, recognize that the actually the pollution problem uh, happen a lot in uh, in crab village in the recycling informal recycling activities and. Um, not so a lot uh, in the uh, in the um, uh, collector and aggregator, so we should uh, uh, we should uh, separate the problem and uh, and, and understand where uh, where is the problem, and uh, in fact uh, we as we are not the uh, engineering uh, environmental engineering, so um, we don't have. Uh, uh, information clearly about the level of uh, pollution uh, and the process of uh, worker in uh, our study. Yeah. Thank you. And then speaking of these aggregators, are the non-official aggregator systems specific to Hanoi or are there similar systems in other Vietnamese cities or in other countries that you've seen? Uh, as I see, uh, uh, Following our uh, study, uh, the system of uh, sec informal sector is not only the uh, is not only specific in Hanoi, but also in uh, every city in uh, Vietnam. Uh, and uh, we find that maybe uh, the informal sector in Vietnam is uh, different with other country uh, because the um, recyclable waste are uh, um, were by were bought by the, this informal sector, and they work as a, an economic, circular economic, uh, naturally, uh, without the support and any uh, support uh, in, uh, of uh, policy or government. So I think it is the main difference. And uh, another difference it is in the collector system, there is a lot of uh, uh, a kind of uh, participant, of stakeholder, uh, even formal and informal, and sometimes the difference and the limit between formal and informal is not clear uh, because some aggregators they have registered, uh, but they work with the informal worker, for example, and uh, government can um, con cannot control the salary and the quantity of this activity, for example. That's very interesting because in South Africa, we have quite a large informal sector as well. So it's quite interesting to hear how it's working in Vietnam and, you know, being able to compare that. And one of the discussions we've been having a lot is they want to integrate these informal workers into the formal space. And I was just wondering, how is that conversation? Has it happened in Vietnam? And what have been the responses? Yeah, in Vietnam, uh, in fact, the, the informal sector uh, exists uh, without uh, forbidden and they are not illegal. So these activities uh, are considered, considered actually now as um, family com uh, commercial, 
activity, for example, at the scale of uh, family, uh, familiar uh, activity, so that uh, uh, there are uh, uh, complementary uh, in the activity of informal sector and uh, formal sector in the West Coalition, in West Coalition, so that uh, they work together uh, without conflict. Uh, so I think it is another point uh, uh, which is different with the uh, other country. Yeah. Thank oh, you sorry, for that. I'm just sorry. If I may, oh, add go also, ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, right now in Vietnam, uh, there is an EPR uh, scheme, so extended producer responsibility um, law that is uh, under consideration. So the decree is uh, under writing, under drafting, and this is a key question for EPR implementation, how to deal with this informal sector, how to define their respective role with a formal one, informal one, knowing that they are not illegal, they are family, practice one, but this is really a key question that is uh, raised now at the, at the highest level of the, of the decree. So I'm, I'm sure in the next future, we will have more, uh, more knowledge on how to, to deal with that. We're facing the exact same issue right now because we're currently going through setting up our EPR regulations and the issue of the informal sector is how are they considered? So you know, hopefully we can learn from each other or see how different countries handle it and compare in the future. Uh, just another last question from me. Did you do any outreach or education campaign with the informal sector surrounding plastic pollution? Uh, actually not yet, but we count it effectively in our uh, future project uh, because I think it's very necessary uh, for people who, who, work, in, uh, who work in this uh, in this field and this uh, activity, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, we've got two minutes left, so I'd just like to ask one closing question from both of you. Emily, you, in, you indicated at the start that the project has now come to a close. Is that correct? So I was wondering, what are the future plans since there's been all this capacity building in Vietnam? You know, is the project going to continue, but under the auspices of the Vietnam universities, will they now be taking over and actually leading these projects and carrying on with this work? I don't know yet, actually, to be, to be frank. <laughs> um, what we know is that the methodologies, both methodologies are now used by researchers for different projects. So for sure, the methodology will remain and what we've constructed is already used in different uh, research projects. Mm -hmm. Regarding the observatory and the monitoring, um, it's still under discussion. I don't know if the Monray, the government authorities will uh, take it over as it is now or will they make some change? I, I, we, we really don't know. We, we, we will have a meeting with them soon and we will decide what will be the future. For sure, so far we don't have funds for, for the next uh, few months, but we will look uh, on if the Monroe is interested, how we can uh, support for the takeover of the one year or two years to be able to continue to take samples quite regularly. And uh, if I can, I can uh, uh at a point that um, for the uh, social science uh, activity as a lecturer in university, I, um, I count to develop the knowledge of this uh, system and the methodology uh, to continue to uh, learn and to learn, understand and uh, maybe to raise awareness uh, between uh, our uh, environment. And then uh, in fact, we are already now with uh, Emily uh, in uh, another project uh, calling recycle, um, uh, re rethinking plastic. So uh, we are now using the uh, result of uh, our study of compost uh, to uh, work together with Mondre, with uh, other partners to develop and to, um, to contribute up, uh, an, an EPR policy uh, brief uh, 
uh, to think how, about how to integrate the informal sector in the uh, formal uh, sector and uh, to keep balance and uh, to do not uh, uh, make so, so large chains of uh, this activity and to uh, uh, keep the good pie and diminue, reduce uh, the negative pie of this system. And, uh, and uh, actually now we are have a um, pilot project in uh, Ho Chi Minh City to uh, enhance uh, this activity of uh, collecting and recycling, uh, uh, especially for packaging here. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be interested to see the future work that is going to come out of Vietnam. You've definitely grabbed my attention and interest. We're going to close off our webinar now. Do you have any final comments that you'd like to share with our audience? No, um, well, first, thank you for listening to us. And thank you for considering, as we said, the, the case of uh, developing countries regarding the challenges that are facing and the change that is um, induced toward, a, I would say, worldwide methodology or just worldwide point of view on how to do. And also something I learned with this project is that working with NGO, doing some raising awareness is very something fun and very something uh, useful, I would say. I was really amazed by how these um, people are creative and how uh, they allow us to have more audience on how we can share our science. And it's been very effective uh, way of working and having all this feedback for the youth was uh, was really grateful, I, I think. And so I will say, do not hesitate to, to do this kind of raising awareness side on your project. It's uh, very, very interesting. Thank you. And Huyen, any final comments? <laughs> so I would like to thank, uh, first of all, Emily and then uh, OPW uh, to invite uh, me and to uh, uh, so that I can share and uh, talk about our work. And I'm, I'm very happy that uh, in this uh, project we can uh, start it. Uh, we can start and develop a pluridisciplinary uh, methodology to work together, to share together. Uh, even we come from a uh, very different field, very different uh, discipline. So that uh, I'm happy and thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today and for sharing your work with us, Emily and Huyen. Thanks to the audience for joining us. Thanks to my colleagues behind the scenes, Audrey, Taufin, Riotta for all the hard work in the webinar. Just a reminder, our next webinar is on the 6th of April. So please make sure you tune in. And have a great day.